Well, it's me, Amanda, and today I'm here to talk about the books that I read in April. So I read six books in April, which is, again, um, less than I normally would read, but it's because I tackled another gigantic book. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So to give you some quick stats, I like I said, read six books. It was 2,356 pages and four hours of audio, which again is not actually accurate. I, I definitely listened to way more than that. But yeah, um, technically I, in terms of the pages, it's a little less than March, but it was still really good. Better than both uh, January and March. Okay, so let's get into the actual books that I read. First up, I read <clears throat> uh, Fate, Inked, and Blood by Danielle Jensen. I actually got this as my book of the month, but I ended up splurging on the edition that has the blue pretty edges, and it's embossed and shiny. So, And I did that because I really enjoyed this book. So this one is a romanticy. Uh, it's kind of like Norse inspired. We've got our main character Freya. Freya is married to this guy who has like, the people here have God, some people, not many, have God powers. And there's various powers that they can have. And her husband has the ability to like make fish, I don't know, kind of command fish basically, things of the sea. And as a result, he uses this power to help feed the village. She marries this guy because her family's like, please marry him. And he's awful. He sucks. She hates him. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> he wants to divorce her. And she ends up in another situation where she is going to become the second wife of this other guy who's a conqueror and who heard a prophecy that if he married this certain handmaiden or this certain shield maiden, shield maiden, that he would be able to become the king of everybody, basically. In the meantime, he has a hot son. <laughs> and this is a romance between her and the hot son. So Let's talk what I liked, what I didn't like. So I I really thought that this was a great like overall fantasy story. The balance between fantasy and romance is really good. I actually really enjoyed the fantasy elements of this book. And like there's this one section where they're going through these creepy c caves and it was just chef's kiss. I really liked that part. I had a good time. There's a lot of very common, like, romance tropes in this, but still, I enjoyed it. And the character, like, our main character, Freya, I really liked her, but it's funny because I read somebody else's review who, like, is one of my Goodreads friends who didn't enjoy it as much, and she was like, Freya was kind of, like, a little combative. She wasn't as into her. You know what? Totally fair. Like, not the most inaccurate opinion. Yet at the same time, I didn't mind. I don't know. Sometimes, like when it comes to criticism of characters, that can be a thing where the criticism is legitimate, but at the same time, you just are like, well, it didn't bother me personally. So I liked her. <laughs> and the only thing I didn't like about her, I actually thought like the way she interacted with other characters was fine. I didn't like that she does that thing where she's convinced she's right about something, so she goes head first into whatever potentially dangerous situation because she's convinced she's doing the right thing. I'm not a huge fan of that in characters, characters who can't admit that, like, maybe you're being tricked or maybe you should, like, calm your tits first, you know? Anyway, still really enjoyed it, though. I gave this four and a half stars. I would recommend it for fantasy romance lovers. I know a lot of people are love or hated on this one. I really enjoyed it. Next, I read Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen by Stephen King. Now, I'm not gonna actually. I my mom gave me this I think a long time ago, and she worked at a book publisher, and they do that thing where they rip off the covers. I forget why exactly. 
So I have a coverless version of this book. I don't know if I'm really going to keep that. Anyway, <laughs> this book is a fantasy novel by, by Stephen King. And the basic way I would describe this one is it's like fantasy, medieval fantasy Shawshank Redemption, basically, is what this book is. It's fine. Like, it's not bad. It's told in a very simplistic way um, where, you know, you you have these... Yeah, it's, it's a very simplistic story and it's very much told like a fairy tale. I found it enjoyable, but at the same time it wasn't, like, super captivating. Like I said, it was fine. It was fine. It wasn't bad. Um, I don't know how much I recommend it. It's kind of funny that I read this much Stephen King, so recently. If you really like Stephen King and you like his more fantasy works, then this could be worth checking out. But the characters are kind of bland, in my opinion. And like I said, the story, it's fine. And then next, I read Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Now, mm, this book. So as you may know, I've really enjoyed the Abby Jimenez, um, her recent books. I love Part of Your World. I really loved Yours Truly. And then this one is no exception. It is also a chef's kiss. All right, so this one centers around Justin and Emma. And they both seem to have the same problem that when they date somebody, that person meets the one after dating them. So they decide that they're going to date each other just for the summer and then they'll meet their true loves afterwards. Now I know this is going to be shocking, but it turns out that they actually belong together. No way. I know I'm making fun of the concept. The concept is honestly not not what this book is really about. It has this little concept to try to hook you, but the book is really about two people with messy lives who fall in love. And, oh man, it is so good. And like, comparing this to yours truly, and I feel weird because I'm immediately just jumping into comparison, but I kind of have to to explain my feelings on it. So yours truly was a book that I absolutely loved it. Three quarters of it, I was so into it. And then at the end, it kind of falls apart a little bit. I still gave that book five stars because I loved the beginning part so much and I just kind of refused to let that ending ruin it. Now this one, it took me a while to really feel the chemistry between the characters and feel all the feelings between them. It took me a while, but when it got going, oof, I got real into it. And then I think the ending was a lot better done. Now we still have some messiness, we still have characters that really need to go to therapy, but I felt like it was handled a lot better in this book. I was really rooting for it and it worked out. I mean, I hope that's not a spoiler. It's a romance novel, so yeah, it's gonna work out. But yeah, this, mm, I really, Highly recommend it if you're into romance and you want a really emotional romance. This is this is fantastic. I just, I absolutely loved it. Actually, before I'm done with this one, I'm going to mention a few other things. Our main male character is very much a, like, sweetie cin cinnamon roll of a man, which I appreciate that the guys in this series, it's not technically a series, but I appreciate that the guys are all very, like, how to put it, that that they're very sweetie pies. Like, there's not enough sweet men out there. But Justin has a lot on his, on his plate because he has a lot of responsibility thrown on to him. And Emma, she is a, like, travel nurse. And she hangs out with her best friend, Maddie. Now, that's another thing I should mention. Maddie is probably the best best friend character I have ever read in a book, hands down. The relationship between Emma and Maddie is honestly almost more important relationship between Emma and Justin. It is so good. Mm, loved that. Loved that. I think that was a really great element to this book. It 
five thumbs up. It was amazing. So yeah, anyway, and Emma, she has had a rough childhood because her mother was terrible, terrible. Anyway, so good. More ladies that need to go into therapy, which apparently is my jam, but highly recommend. Five stars, by the way, five stars. Okay, next I read How to Speak Dragonese by Cressida Cowell. I read this with to my kids. Um, I'm, I count the middle grade books that I read with them because like that's a legitimate amount of reading in my opinion. We have some other like chapter books that are much shorter and quicker reads. I don't I don't bother telling you about those. Although if anyone ever wants any like children's book recommendations, um, I could do a video on that someday. But anyway, this one is the, basically the continuing adventures of Hiccup Haddock the Third. Um, yeah, Hiccup Horrendous Haddock the Third. Anyway, in this one, it's basically them dealing with the Romans, which we haven't, we've heard of the Romans, but we haven't really encountered them yet. So we encounter them in this book and we meet some new characters. We see the return of old characters. It's fun. It's a cute kid. It's an entertaining kids book. There is some kind of, there is, one thing about this book is it's got a lot of things like dragons getting eaten, dragons eating other dragons and stuff like that. So if that kind of stuff you think your kid would be bothered by, just like a heads up about that. But for the most part, it's fine. Um, I give this a 3.75 stars. It was entertaining. It wasn't amazing, but there you go. The next book I read after that was The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simmons. I don't know if it's Simmons or Simons. I think Simons, because there's only one M. Anyway. Ooh, this book. Okay. This is one of my 12 and 12. This was suggested by my friend Jesse Marie. Now, this book takes place, it's World War II. We're in Leningrad. A very bad place to be in World War II. And it centers around this girl, Tatiana, and her family. And it also centers around a gentleman named Alexander, who she meets one day, and they just kind of, you know, hit it off. But then she finds out that Alexander is dating her sister. And it's, it's a whole thing. It's very dramatic. And this book is hard for me to talk about because it's... I don't know how to explain this book. This book is honestly really good. Like we we really see an amazingly detailed picture of what it was like to live in a city that was under siege during a time this time. People are starving, people are dying left and right. This is not a happy book. If you want a book that like has a happy ending, this is not the one. It is just death death death. Everybody dies, okay? Just, I know it's a spoiler, but like it's a World War II book taking place in a place where people were starving to death. So yeah, everybody dies, okay? Now, I, I think as a whole, this is honestly an excellent book, but I didn't really enjoy it. First of all, because everybody dies. But second of all, I didn't like either Tatiana or Alexander. I didn't like either of them, and I think that's kind of like a problem. Tatiana starts off the book, she's only 17, and she acts like a 17 year old, which I can totally forgive. I actually forgive a lot for Tatiana. She's honestly not a bad character. She's fine for like most of the book. I think she's fine, but she has this thing where she is so stubborn and it actually almost relates back to a fading to blood where she's convinced she knows the right way to do things and she's going to do what she's going to do no matter what no matter what kind of like honest good advice she's given she refuses to listen to any of it and it becomes extremely frustrating at times because she just won't listen to any kind of practical good advice and the book kind of just like lets her do this 
She also is a character who everyone likes to take advantage of. And it happens like two major times. And then there's Alexander. Alexander is as a whole a good guy, but he can be very domineering. He's very bossy with her. And he can be kind of borderline. Like if you had a girlfriend who treated her like Alexander treats her, you would be like, girl, you'd be concerned because he's kind of borderline abusive. <clears throat> he's very like, you need to take care of me. I want you with me. <clears throat> and the, at one point in the book, and there's an explanation for this. It's because she was around people who were taking advantage of her. But it was like a little too much the other direction. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. This book is very, very, very long, and I did the whisper sync with this, so I read it on my Kindle and I had listened to it. So I actually did listen to a good portion. The other thing I should mention is the narrator is a man, and his voice for Tatiana is extremely annoying. And it m probably made her more annoying as a character than she is. Just being real here. So anyway, as a whole, I think this is a fantastic book, really. I just think it wasn't quite my thing. Like, it's really close to being my thing because I am, I generally really enjoyed the concept of it. I enjoyed the journey of it, but it's hard when you just don't quite like the characters and you should like the characters, you know? So anyway, I don't know how to rate this book. I gave it a three stars. I think that's harsh. I don't think that's really accurate. Like, this is a five star book that I gave three stars because sometimes you read a good book, but you just don't enjoy it. I hope Jesse doesn't kill me. <laughs> like, girlfriend, it wasn't a bad suggestion. I can totally, it seems like a book that I would absolutely love, but I think it just didn't this just wasn't it for me, unfortunately. But hey, I tried it. I went for it. And like I said, it wasn't a bad book. And then lastly, this month, I read <clears throat> Sunbringer by Hannah Kater. So I read God Killer in the fall. It wasn't that long ago. <clears throat> but loved God Killer, gave that one five stars. So Sunbringer is a sequel. I can't tell you the plot really because it's a sequel, but generally what I can tell you is we're dealing with a, is this is a high fantasy. It's a fantasy world where gods really exist and they have, there's like a magic system surrounding them. Like basically they have shrines and prayer, people when they pray to them gives them power. When they offer things to gods, it gives them power. And there, there's gods of all kinds of things, like everything. Anything you think of. There's a god of broken sandals, like to try to keep your sandal not breaking. Like, like I said, gods of everything, of varying power. So this continues on from the first book. What, what was really strong about the first book was the characters. The characters are fantastic. And you get kind of like a little bit of a found family aspect with it, which who doesn't love that, right? Now this one, uh, this one, on the other hand, wasn't quite as solid for me. It, it very much, like, so there's going to be a third book. And I think this book suffers because of that. Because I feel like this book is just a setup for the last book, unfortunately. Is it bad? No. I honestly enjoyed it. But it's slow. It's a lot of build-up. The ending was good. But it wasn't good enough to, like, get as good as God Killer was, you know? It, it was good, though. And I am really looking forward to the third book. It, did, it definitely didn't hurt my, like, desire to read the third book. It just wasn't as, like, oh, my God, you know? Like, anyway, solid book. I gave, I'd give it four stars. I gave it four stars. It, it's a solid four-star book, but... Like I said, it needs, it's just, it's sitting there setting up for another book. So it's kind of hard when you're reading and reading and reading. And like I said, it was rather slow. 
I know this isn't a very specific review, but... And that's it for April. This month, May, I have been reading more like... So I've been reading all these big books. So this month, I'm kind of going with quicker, breezier, easier reads. Um, for the most part, the book I'm reading now is a little more intense, but I think I'll still be able to feel finish it pretty quickly. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. If you actually made it to the end of this, I would love a purple heart emoji. And yeah, 